like my hat? I do. Sweet. What's going on, guys? Typical, this is a typical, typical jam. Always somebody just keeps continually playing, like every time. You know how it works. It's like, second you want to talk, it's all of a sudden you hear. It's just like, stop. What's going on? Brian Bauer here. And today we are going to do a quick comparison between two pedals. Not exact the best comparison in the world, but we're going to do it anyway. A few weeks back, meaning like a month ago, I did uh, a review on the Behringer Vintage Tube Overdrive, which they call the TO800. Well, we don't have uh, the Ibanez 808. Is it 808 they call it? What do they call it? Uh, yeah, I think it's the TS-808. Okay. Well, Behringer basically just makes like a knockoff. It's kind of like great value at Walmart, no name at Superstore kind of deal. Except, you know, these are green instead of yellow. You know what I'm saying? So we have a Ibanez TS9 and we're gonna go through some cleans and distortions today where uh, we'll have the same settings on both and just see how they sound. Probably a bit of a different gain structure. And we'll just, we're just gonna dick around, see what we get, we'll switch to swap the guitar back and forth. Also, who are you? My name's Nick Turbo. you may have, uh see me on a few Brian's videos uh, and vice versa. Well, you were on the first video on my channel ever. The That's first, right. Yeah, you were in the first video. We were that playing is... at, at our old high school. Yes. So you were actually in the first video and then you went a long time before you were ever in another one. But uh, I think the next one you were in was uh, late last year. It was the, the Bower Metal Rick battle. Yes, part one or part two, I can't remember. Uh, you were in part one. And yeah. I think you were in part two of the other one? You were in the shred yes. one too. Yes. Yeah, you were in both of the jams. Yes, the do another one. shred one. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> I don't always shred in them either. I just kind of play whatever seems to fit, you know? So anyway, we got these here today. So we're gonna go back and forth. So as you can see here on the floor, uh, we've got the TS9, we've got the Behringer, the TO800. We're gonna be running that into my camper which right now we're using a mathless profile by uh, Michael Britt. And we're gonna, that's what he was playing through there with the Behringer on. So if you wanna just stick around and do that again, but we'll put it on the TS9. This would be the clean, this is clean without it. Difference. I think there might be a slight bit more gain coming from the um, the Behringer. Just uh, maybe a hair. Maybe mm -hmm. it's just like mine. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, it might be like coloring it a little bit. I guess with a little bit more yeah, gain. Yeah, something something like that. Yeah. You know? um, um, he has a channel, by the way. It's pretty small. I don't know how many. Do you have, how many subscribers do you have? <laughs> Probably under ten. Probably under ten. Yeah. I, it's been a long time for me. Yeah, I just kind of started putting out some, uh, just some random covers of uh, some stuff I'm, as I'm, of late. I'm on his channel too. We did, um, we did uh, Slither by uh, Velvet Revolver. That's right. And uh, I did the solo for it. I don't know the rest of the song. <laughs> I can barely remember the solo. I think I did it in like three takes. And got it going. Um, cool, let's um, run through a few other settings. Let's put the gains all the ways up. So we'll start with the Behringer. Want to okay. play again? <laughs> Cool and you're a robot, there ain't no fooling. 
Is that the words? So similar in sound that uh, he had a walk. Yeah. Hey, hey man, you want to give her a go? Yeah, Let's... I'll give her. I'll, I'll, I'll take her for a rip. I can't believe we've been recording for seven minutes already. Oh, yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. What? <laughs> How to make an awkward video 101 with Brian Bauer and Nicholas Turple. He's over. Not bad. That's it. Let's uh, turn the game back a little bit. Just I want to go back to what we had there before. We're going to switch to the metal in a second. Sweet. All right, hold up. Have a... And uh, if I put the tone up a little bit, we'll go right back to the middle here again. And it's like. I mean, I think they sound pretty good through this. Yeah, like but... it's like. It's kind of one of those things, like, there's definitely going to be, as you mentioned in your other video, there's going to be definitely, like, a build quality difference. That's the bigger one between the two, is that if you pick up the Ibanez, it feels very genuine, as I always say, if something's, like, it's got the metal. The switch is decent on it, where, like, if you hit the uh, um, the Behringer one, it just has, like, this little click. If you can heard in the old video, I compared the Boss to the uh, Behringer. That's the real big difference is the build quality there. So if you wanted something that's cheap and works for now, I think the Behringer is always good. But you know what? I think we're going to go up to the metal settings again. Uh, how I would do this for a boost. Um, drive always up, turn over the fair. Which is very close to how I run it. I generally run it uh, tone at about noon mm -hmm. and level at noon or you know, adjust accordingly based on the amp. Yeah, so right now we are using um, the Guidaris uh, Guido Bungenstock. It's the Bogner XTC or the Bogner STC, which is more of, and like with everything turned off like that. If I turn that on, so that sounds pretty awesome yeah. there. So we'll just boost it now at the uh, Ibanez, it's, it is on, it's like... Uh... I mean, pff, sounds pretty close to me. Do you want to try A being them again quickly, like shorter... Uh, shorter sh yeah, shorter like playthrough of each. Okay, sure. So I 
All right. Ivan, is that all on you? Yep. Yeah, it's, uh, I feel like, again, there's a slight difference in character. I feel like the Ibanez is kind of like kicking it a little more, whereas the the Behringer is maybe like adding a little bit of tone, coloring, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Which, you know, subjective, not a bad thing or a good thing. Yeah, there's, there's like, the differences in sound are like, they're very minute. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, like it's really, uh, I don't think it makes a huge difference sound-wise. Maybe some absolute gear stuff like hey, this mm -hmm. stuff. I guarantee you that if you were to play this in front of a crowd of people, even if there was a bunch of gear stuff stuff, they wouldn't have a clue if you were playing all the like it was all Behringer. I'm sure they wouldn't have a no. clue until maybe things were breaking. Especially, especially in a mix, right? Or like, like in a band scenario. Like you're playing live, like people don't know the difference between this kind of stuff. And the overall, I say it, like we were saying, like the main thing here is like, do you want to spend extra money now on the Ibanez, which will probably last you longer, or you could buy the Behringer and it would probably still last you quite some time. Yeah. Not quite the build quality, but the Ibanez is in the, you know, three figures. The Behringer is, you know, $40 Canadian. I mean, if you want a good overdrive now, I'd still go for the Behringer if I wanted a cheap one. Like, yeah, I mean, the build quality is what it is, but it's 40 bucks. Like, what do you think you're gonna get? Yeah, I mean, like, I don't recall exactly what I paid for the Ibanez. I got it used from a friend, so it was, you know, it was a decent price. So, I mean, you know, it's, find a, you know, Ibanez tube screamer used and you're okay with used gear, then I would say go for it. Otherwise, you know, the Behringer seems like a solid option yeah. depending on your I mean, use case. Amazon, exactly. I mean, it, it does the job. How can you really complain about it at that sense? Like in terms of tone and stuff, I mean, that's for a quick tone test, that's pretty awesome. Well, I think for a quick tone test and stuff, I think we did pretty good. Yeah. You know, we played a little bit, I played a little bit. Um, yeah, he has a channel, you can um, sub him if you want. It's in the cards. Can you see the cards? The cards? Yeah, like the cards at the end of the video, like when it comes up, like what the, the other videos yeah, you're gonna like watch. Yeah, right there, yeah. or there, Well, or it's, all, it's there. actually over there, and I like, seriously, like it's over there. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna do that. Like you're just grabbing at nothing. But anyway, you know, there's, there's cards at the end of the videos, and basically, you're supposed to click on them to watch more of my channel or his channel. I have more videos, but you can definitely check out our cover of uh, Slither by Velvet Revolver. That's right. Actually, from a guy from the first video that we ever did too, uh, he's in that, you just don't see him. He's the bass player. Bass player hiding in the background. This is how they always work. They're, they're, yeah. they're either the worst player in the band or like they're the best and most reliable. It's one or the other. Yeah, I mean, he was, he was the best and most reliable. He's just not in the video. Yeah, you know. Not everybody wants to be in videos. That's right. Not everybody can have a beautiful haircut exactly like this. Yeah, I'm not taking my hat off. I might blind everyone. You know what? I, I, well, you know, it takes a lot to expose yourself on camera. And I mean, I know I'm flashing people with my head right now. All right, this, this video is this video's done. I'm going to leave all that there too. All right. Later on, we're on everybody. <laughs> everybody.